So we ended our last video um, mentioning that we had a little surprise and this is it. We drove all the way from Arizona to uh, Bend, Oregon to buy this Jeep and we named him Ricky. And yeah, we're really, really excited to add a, another vehicle to the caravan. And um, so we just thought we'd chat with you guys about why we decided to buy another vehicle. When we first started traveling uh, full-time in Earl, I very quickly realized how much easier life would be with a second vehicle. So it took me a little bit of time to convince Mead, but once he was on board, we started looking pretty much on all of the western side of the U.S. for this specific Jeep. We wanted the Jeep Cherokee. Um, we wanted something between 1998 and when they stopped making the Cherokee and we found this perfect perfect Jeep in Bend, Oregon reached out to the guy and unfortunately he already had a seller and he was supposed to sell it that week so we were kind of bummed but we just kept looking and ended up finding another option in Yuma, Arizona so at the time we were in Tucson we decided to drive towards Yuma and lo and behold that very day we got to Yuma, we heard back from the guy in Bend and said that that seller, or sorry, that buyer had backed out. So we pretty much on the fly decided we were gonna get to Bend as soon as possible. While it might seem a little excessive that we now have two vehicles while we're living on the road, it's actually really, really helpful now because we can set Earl up in a pretty remote area that might be a little bit tricky to get into and set him up as base camp and then we can use the Jeep to go explore the area, do errand day, which can get a bit busy if you're talking laundry, uh, getting groceries, doing any other sorts of things. We found that we would spend all day driving Earl around to finish up all these errands with everybody in tow. And so now with the Jeep, we can trade off to doing those errands or running to a trailhead or running to a crag and come back home and Earl is just set and ready for us. And also the girls were kind of tired of riding around in Earl. It kind of scared them and so it's really nice for them to be able to sit in the back and uh, have a nice comfortable ride when we end up having drive days. This Jeep is actually a, my kind of my dream car. I've always loved the older Jeep Cherokees and when Mead and I talked about settling down eventually and getting off the road, we knew we were gonna probably buy a Jeep anyway, so we just cut to the chase a little bit sooner. So now we have the Jeep and we love it. The reason why we, or several reasons why we specifically wanted this Jeep, um, one, the it has a brand new rebuilt engine, so the mileage is only, I think it's only like 32,000 miles when we purchased it. Um, we have a standard manual transmission, which I have always owned manual transmission vehicles, so I really love that aspect. Um, it has slightly larger tires and a lift, so the clearance kind of matches what Earl has, and we can pretty much go anywhere in this thing. Um, it's obviously got four high and four low, and conveniently, this was not planned, but it's red, so it matches Earl so nicely. We met Justin in Bend. We ended up getting an Airbnb for a few days, and we instantly clicked with him. This was his first car that he got in high school, and we were so impressed with how he kept it so clean. He had all the records for the six, seven plus years that he owned the vehicle. And so we were just really, really thrilled to get a 20 plus year old car that looked so well cared for. Um, all we really did was we got new tires and Mead added some heated seats and a few other little things that we need to do cosmetically. But all in all, this Jeep is gonna last us a really, really long time. And we were so thrilled that we ended up being able to buy this Jeep from Justin. So on one of the days where we were not climbing, uh, Karen and I decided to go check out Asterix Pass, which is kind of a famous climber scramble in Smith Rock. And uh, unfortunately, she did take a fall off the top of the ramp side 
It was a pretty gnarly fall. She, uh, her backpack kind of made her lose her balance and she just tipped off the side of the ramp, probably about 20 ish feet and then kind of rolled down and slightly hit her head. Uh, it was somewhat traumatic, but we, I very quickly realized she was fine. I mean, not fine, but she was conscious and could speak. And so, um, then the, uh, the efforts of getting her off of the mountain or the cliff's edge to the ambulance was quite a rescue uh, endeavor. And so knowing we would want to see this again one day when she was fully healed and recovered, I decided to take a little bit of footage during the two plus hour uh, ordeal. So I was going to watch it with you guys and kind of explain what was happening. So very quickly, uh, after I called 911, the Rangers came and then we saw the EMTs across the river in their truck, um, bringing their lifeboat. They had to cross the Crooked River to get to us. And then once the EMTs assessed her, they gave her some pain meds. Um, she tried to walk, but it was just, the ground was just too unstable. So they put her in a little burrito stretcher thing and five to six of the best men and women I've ever met carried her off the trail and it's really hard to tell but that trail was steep and rocky and narrow and it took so much manpower to get her down and into the lifeboat but they did amazing. So the ambulance took her to Redmond for their initial assessment and we kind of got the blow that she had fractured her L1 vertebrae. Um, it was a clean fracture all the way through. So they decided she needed to move to Bend for um, trauma and uh, neurosurgery. And after about three to four days of kind of assessing her injury and several uh, rounds of x-rays, they decided she did need a spinal fusion. So I think four, three or four days after the um, injury, she got the surgery and then we kind of scrambled to find her a place to stay in bend. Long story short, unfortunately, she is off the road for the next three months, so through July. And then it'll be determined um, how she feels about getting back into the bus and joining us on our adventures again. It's been sad not having her with us um it's sad to have to leave her in bend but her daughter will be helping her for a while and we are optimistic that karen will be up and running as soon as she possibly can after karen's accident and kind of taking some time to process that I felt it was really important for me especially to get back on the wall. Even though the accident didn't happen while climbing, it was still something that really brought life and adventure and risk into perspective for me. And so once her daughter arrived, we decided to head out to one of our favorite areas. Um, it's actually outside of Smith Rock, but it is considered part of Smith um, called the Zoo Wall. And it's one of Mead's favorite areas to climb. One, because there are no crowds. And two, because it really lends to his preferred style of climbing, which is overhanging, powerful, big moves on beautiful features. On this climb in particular, this was supposed to be our warm-up climb. Um, and as you can see, he's leading the climb, going up, putting in his gear and clipping his rope in, all the while remembering that any time a fall could happen and even though you try to mitigate your risks as much as possible when you're climbing, there is always a potential for some sort of injury. But as per usual, he did this climb flawlessly and set the top rope for me to try next. On his way down, he usually cleans all the gear off the wall, which makes it easier for me when I decide to top rope it behind him. What you couldn't see from that angle is just how steep 
start of this climb was. You're on your arms the whole way. And I don't have an eight foot wingspan like he does. I'm much shorter and so what might take him one or two moves takes me more like three or four moves. Um, I had an elbow injury for the last two to three years that I worked on consistently for the last year in Texas and so I've been out of climbing shape for quite a while and this this climb really humbled me. It was a struggle and uh, I long for the days when I used to be in much better climbing shape. But I persevered and I eventually pulled that overhang and then finished my way to the top. My biggest mistake on this climb was just hanging around for too long, trying to find the best holds and the best feet. And by the time I got up to the top of this climb, I was so pumped. I didn't really know how many more climbs I could do in that day, but it was still really fun to get out there and get back on some rock and just in enjoy ourselves out in nature. After tiring ourselves out on a few of those overhang climbs, we decided it was time for an early dinner. And so we busted out the hammock and got all cuddly and decided to just enjoy the rest of the evening, hanging out with the dogs and snacking. You would think that living together in 100 square feet 24 seven would mean we would want more space from each other, but what we've actually found is quite the opposite. Um, this lifestyle seems to bring couples closer together or further apart. And for us, we've definitely come closer together and we find that we've really enjoyed these quiet moments together that we didn't really have as much when we were working and living in Texas. After a little nap, the wind started picking up and we decided it was time to head back home. So packed up the hammock and started the two mile trek back to the Jeep. As we hiked out amidst a beautiful sunset, we realized that this was probably gonna be one of the last times for a little while that we'd be climbing because we were about to head south into the Cascades and starting on some more hiking adventures checking out the beautiful waterfalls and rivers and creeks and streams that the Oregon Cascade Mountains have to offer. <laughs> 